Structural Steel Design by Engineer Onderin. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. And we'll be continuing our discussion in Structural Steel Design. And in this video, we'll be discussing how to calculate the strength of an I-shape or an H-shape cross-section column with slender element. Okay, so that's the first part. We're going to use a reduction factor for an I-shape or an H-shape cross-section with a slender flange. Slender means uh, the width to thickness ratio is too large. Uh, sobrang nipis ng member. Okay, if sobrang nipis ng member, then it will uh, fail first at local buckling before it fails general. I'll be discussing that. And also, uh, we're going to calculate the nominal compressive strength using those reduction factor. And also the LRFD design compressive strength and the ASD allowable compressive strength of the column. So let's start now. But again, uh, if you have not subscribed yet to my channel, please do so. Okay, This is the problem that we're going to solve. Now we're going to determine first the compressive strength of this uh, H shape. This is HP 410 by 131 uh, A92 steel column having a length of 10 meters and fixed at both uh, fixed at the bottom and pinned at the top. Okay, so before we we'll proceed on calculating for the strength, let us discuss this first. Uh, ano yung local buckling? Uh, for members subject to actual compression, sections are classified as non slender or slender element sections. If the width to thickness ratio of one or more compression elements does not exceed gamma lambda r, this is the limiting um, for non slender uh, element that is equivalent to 0 0.56 square root of E over Fy uh, for the flange and also 1.49 square root of E over Fy for the web then the section is said to be non-slender, okay? Again, if the width to thickness ratio uh, does not exceed these limits, then the section is non-slender. And if the width to thickness ratio uh, exceeds that limit, then the section is referred to as a slender element section. That means it will experience a local buckling. Okay, there will be a local instability uh, like this one. As you can see before, it will experience a general buckling. Okay, so uh, based on NCP 2015 and also uh, the AISC, uh, ito yung provision, the nominal compressive strength PN shall be determined based on the limit states of flexural buckling. No, uh, the same PN is equal to flexural buckling stress FCR times the gross area and the flexural buckling stress FCR is determined as follows. So meron na itong reduction factor Q. Okay? Uh, kasi if ever uh, there is no slender element then there's no need for us to include Q here. Okay? So ganun yan. So this is the limiting slenderness ratio for um, um, inelastic buckling no? and ito naman yeah, that means if the slenderness ratio is less than that limiting value then this is inelastic buckling uh, critical flexural buckling stress and if KL over R exceeds that limiting then uh, the buckling will be an um, elastic buckling stress and that F sub E has this formula you know, the Euler uh, formula, the elastic critical buckling stress, pi squared E over KL over R squared. And this Q is the net reduction factor accounting for all slender compression elements. Now, how to calculate this Q? So, sabi ng code, uh, Q is equal to the net reduction factor accounting for all slender compression elements. And that is 1.0 for members without slender elements, same as what we've discussed in my previous videos. Uh, if you haven't watched those videos, uh, try to look for those no, because I've discussed uh, how to calculate the flexural uh, buckling stress and also the nominal strength for uh, I shapes without uh, slender element. So let's continue. 
uh, that Q has a formula equal to the product of QS and QA uh, for members with slender element sections. And for cross-sections composed of only unstiffened um, slender element, yung unstiffened is yung flange, no? Uh, Q is equal to QS and QA is equal to 1. Uh, for cross-section composed of only stiffened slender elements, stiffened as a I shape or H shape is the web. Now, so for that, uh, Q will be equal to Q sub A. That means we are to take QS equal to 1. Now, QS corresponds to the flange. Okay, QA corresponds to the web. So for sections composed of both stiffened and stiffened slender elements, if uh, both the uh, flange and the web or the web and the flange uh, are slender elements, then Q is equal to the product of QS and QA. For sections composed of multiple and stiffened slender elements, it is conservative to use the smaller QS from the more slender element in determining the member strength for pure compression. Okay, so ito yung formula uh, as given by the code, medyo mahaba, no? Ito, tsaka ito, actually, for the I shape, uh, tsaka H shape, it has flanges that have flanges that are slender, then ito yung titingnan natin, no? Uh, ito are for flanges and angles and plates projecting from built up I shape columns or other compression members. So, uh, for the built up columns, ito. Okay? Uh, then, ito is yung rolled talaga. Okay? I shape uh, rolled steel. No? And for single angles, ito. For uh, stems of T's, WT's, no? Ito naman yung gagamitin. Okay? But since the problem that we're going to solve is an I shape or an H shape, then uh, yung gagamitin natin is yung ito lang, no? And if ever, the web is slender, you know, that is the stiffened element, no, uh, this is how to calculate the deduction factor Q sub A. Okay, uh, that is equal to the ratio of the effective uh, area over the cross area. Or this is equal to the summation of effective areas of cross section based on the reduced effective width B sub A and A sub G is the gross, the given area of the HP or the W shape. And this uh, B sub E is the um, height of the web you know, from uh, fillet, you know? uh, fillet, upper fillet to uh, lower fillet. So the reduced effective width B is determined as follows. Uh, for uniformly compressed slender elements, uh, B over T must be greater than 1.49 square root of E over F. Uh, we accept flanges of square and rectangular sections of uniform uh, thickness. So, ito yung gagamitin na formula. Okay? Uh, this is for the I H shape or the W shape, you no, know, for an I shape uh, cross section where that F is taken as FCR with FCR calculated based on Q equal to 1. Okay? So, ganun yan. Now, um, since we are just Focusing on the flange or focusing on the H shape, an I shape, no? Then uh, for flange, if the flange is slender, so ito yung gagamitin, we're gonna check the B over T. If it doesn't exceed this limiting value, then that means we're gonna use QS equal to 1. But if the B over T is ranging between these limiting values, then we're gonna use this. And if the B over T, uh, the B is half of the width of the flange and T is the thickness of the flange. So if that exceeds this limiting, then we're going to use this. Well, if we were to graph that, it's like this. Now, uh, eta is for 0.56 square root of E over Fy. And eta is for uh, 1.03 square root of E over Fy. So at first, they would, this would be linear from here up to data, from 1 up to this is something like 0.625. No, and this will be, uh, ano na? parang inverse function na. Okay? So, ganun yan. Now, for slender, uh, since we're to focus on the web, if ever, uh, because this is the only unstiffened, uh, the stiffened element, then this is how we're going to calculate the QA. And uh, the B is the H, no? So, this is what I meant, the fillet here. Okay? So, that means that 
B is equal to H, and that is equal to D minus twice of uh, the design value of K, you know, K D A S. Okay, so that B E B sub E effective width must be less than B. If we can get a B E that is greater than B, well, of course, we just have to use B, and that would mean that uh, the Q will just be equal to one. The Q A will just be equal to one if ever the same lang. No, but uh, if ever B sub E is less than this H or this B then we can get a QA less than one. Again, F is taken as the flexural buckling stress calculated based on Q equal to one. Siguro, hindi um, niyo pa naiintindihan talaga, no? Pero let's solve the problem in detail. Okay, so the, uh, this is the question. Determine the nominal compressive strength of HP 410 by 131 a992 steel column having a length of 10 meters and it's and it's fixed at the bottom and pinned at the top uh, the minimum yield stress is 345 megapascal so these are the properties of that uh, hp okay so as you can see uh, medyo mahaba yung flange niya no so siguro this would uh, buckle no local buckling if that is subject to uh, compression okay so Yung first step is to uh, calculate the limiting uh, width to thickness ratio. So for the flange, uh, that is 0 0.56 square root of E over FY. Its denotation is lambda, lambda R. Uh, that is the limiting uh, width to thickness ratio for non-slender element, okay? So um, that is equal to 0 0.56 square root of 200,000 over 345, and that is 13.48. Now for the web, uh, that is equal to 1.49 square root of E over FY. So substitution, uh, making FY equal to 345, E equal to 200,000, we can get 35.87. Now after that, uh, calculate the width to thickness ratio of this HP. So the width is half of the uh, flange width, and that means that is this. Okay, then the thickness, of course, is the thickness of that flange. So that is half of BF over TF or BF over 2TF. And that is 399 over twice of 13.7. And that is equal to 14.562, okay? Now, next. Uh, as you can see, that exceeds 13.48. And what does it mean? That means the, fla the flange is a slender element. Now, it's, it's too thin. No? Uh, napaka nitis nito. So this would uh, probably experience a local buckling. Okay? So we must uh, add a um, factor there. No? Or consider a factor. Now for the web, uh, the web is H over DW. Uh, the H is again equal to the total depth minus KDES. Okay, so ito yun. Okay, so okay, so um, that is equal to 389 minus twice of 43.7 over 13.7. This 43.7 is this K design no, provided by the AISC uh, manual. No, so uh, that KDES is the distance from the outer flange uh, to the uh, web toe of fillet. Chan, no? So evaluating that, that will give us 22.015. And this is just less than this uh, lambda RW, not the limiting for the uh, non-slender element. So that means the web is just a non-slender. No, uh, it's not a slender element. But since the flange is a slender element, then we have to solve for the Q, and that is the Q sub S, right? So calculating the reduction factor QS for slender and stiffened element, um, first we're gonna calculate this 0.56 square root of E over Fy. No, um, that is 13.48 as we get in Ina. And our B over DW is 14.562. It exceeds that. 
right? Now let's check if it also exceeds 1.03 of square root of e over f y. So that 1.03 square root of 200,000 over 345 is, just, is equal to 24.8. And this is greater than this. So that means this b over t is ranging within this and this, no? Uh, in between. And with that, we're gonna use this formula. Now 1.415 minus 0.74 b over t uh, times square root of f y over e. Because again, if this would be greater than this, suppose uh, we got b over t equal to 25 or, or 30, then uh, the QS that we're going to use is the 0.69e over FYB over T squared. Okay, uh, I discussed that Nina. Now, uh, how to use this, how, how to evaluate this? This B over T is just the um, BF over 2TF as what we got, that's 14.562. So substituting that, 1.415 minus 0.74 times 14.562 square root of FY over E. And that is equal to 0.9675. Now take note, huh? this is square root of Fy over E, not square root of E over Fy. Okay, so balik tacha dito. Now, so that is 0 0.9675. That's less than 1. Okay? And for the reduction factor QA, for slender stiffened element, or that means the web, that is just equal to 1. Uh, it's because the web is not a slender element. And thus, the value of Q is just equal to this 0.9675, okay? Uh, that's it, no, uh, Q is 0.9675. Now, how to apply this Q? So, balikan natin yung formula, uh, yung flexural vacuum stress, but uh, i-calculate muna natin yung limiting for the um, inelastic buckling. Now, so, that is 4.71 square root of E over QFY. Now, so, ilalaki yung value nito. Now, with this Q, uh, that is equal to 4.71 square root of 200,000 over 0 0.9675 times 345. So, that will give us 115.32. Now, after that, calculate the slenderness ratio, KL over R. So, as you can see, the given length is 10 meters. Now, and this column is fixed at the bottom and pinned at the top. So, that means its theoretical value the theoretical value of k is 0.7. But since uh, we are designing, no, uh, the recommended value is equal to 0.8 from now on, okay? Um, do not use any more the theoretical, better to use the uh, design, recommended design value of k. And that is 0.84 fixed pin uh, ends. And after that, uh, use uh, the minimum r, no, so that uh, we can get the maximum kl over r. There's no lateral bracing. No, uh, within the mid height or the uh, the section points, no. So that means we just have to use the minimum radius of gyration, 93.5 millimeters. Okay. So after that, calculating the KL over R, that is 0.8 of 10 meters, okay, uh, over 93.5, and that will give us 85.56. Now this is just less than this limiting value. That means the buckling is inelastic, okay? And the formula that we're going to use is the 0.658 square root of uh, Fe over Fy, or Fy over Fe times Fy. So uh, first, let's calculate the Fe, the elastic critical buckling stress, or the Euler critical buckling stress. So that's pi squared E over the square of slender ratio. So substituting that, uh, that will give us 269.64 megapascal. Okay, so after that, uh, let's use that here in calculating the flexural buckling stress. Take note, there will be a Q, there will be Q now, no? So that is now Q times 0.658 raised to Q FY over FE times FY. If there is no slender element, now if the uh, flange is too short, Okay, or not too thin, or the web is too short or not too thin, then there's no need for us to include Q, no? Or we just have to make them one. But since we got a Q of 0 0.9625, uh, 0 0.9675, I mean, so substituting that, 
okay, 0.9675 uh, times 0.658. A raised to the power of 0 0.9675 times 345 divided by 269.64 uh, times 345 and that is equal to 198.82 megapascal well if we would not include q or if we would just make q equal to one then we can get the flexural critical buckling stress or the flexural buckling stress equal to 201.95 okay so really it's not say that means we are trying to protect this column from experiencing a local buckling, okay? Uh, experiencing local instability. So, mag-reduce yung value ng FCR. Ito is for the general buckling kasi. Okay? It would fail general buckling. So, calculating the nominal strength that is equal to the product of the stress times its gross area. And the gross area is 16,600. So, the product is equal to uh, 3,300,412 newtons and in kilonewton that's 3,300.41 kilonewtons that is the nominal strength of this uh, section okay and suppose the question is what is the LRFD um, design compressive strength and also what is the ASD uh, allowable compressive strength so we have to multiply this by reduction factor Vc now for the LRFD and divide this by uh, omega C, the factor of safety, for ASD. So for LRFD, the design compressive strength is equal to 0.9 of that because V is 0.9 and that is equal to 2,970.37. Right, that means the factored load must be less than this or this must be greater than or equal to the factored compressive load, the 1.2 that load plus 1.2 live load. This must be greater than the required strength. And the allowable strength design, ASD, uh, the uh, value of the allowable compressive strength is 3,300.41, the nominal, over the factor of safety, 1.67. That will give us 1,976.29. Okay? So, ibig sabihin yan, the sum of the dead load and live load compressive uh, strength, a compressive force must be less than this. For this, the allowable uh, strength must be greater than the sum of compressive service live load and compressive service dead load. Okay? Uh, dapat, let's say, 1,900 lang yung sum or 1,970 lang yung sum ng um, dead load and live load. So that's what it means. Okay. So I hope you like it. No. Um, balikan nyo lang if hindi nyo na gets. No. Uh, just follow this procedure. That is how to calculate the nominal strength, the LRF, the design, compressive strength, and also the ASD allowable compressive strength. No. If there is a slender element. If the uh, flange is a slender element. In my next video, I'll be discussing how to calculate the nominal strength if the web, no web naman yung slender. That means if this is too long or too thin, no napaka nipis, no, uh, how to calculate its Q. So that will be in my next video. So I hope you like it. Uh, if you do, uh, click the like button and also share this to your friends and classmates. Okay. And also, don't forget to subscribe if you have not subscribed yet right and um, also like the facebook page ko, the underreal uh, engineering solutions or underreal solutions and also we have a facebook group on the real so on the real uh, engineering solution subscribers or on the real subscriber on the real solution subscribers okay so i'll be posting uh, the solutions no uh, the pdf copies of my solutions so that you can review okay so Try to look for that look. So thank you for listening. Huh? Um, thank you for going to this far. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye and God bless.